Okay, the system I'm going to teach you uh, very quickly is called a grid system. And I talked to you a little bit about that last class, just to let you know that a grid is a very ubiquitous element in our lives as well as uh, science, the universe, architecture, human life, pursuit in nature, and uh, we base a lot of things on the grid. The grid is also a system of reproducing something in a recognizable result. So it, it's a, a, a very clever system, and what it does is it creates small drawing pictures. Each one of the squares in a grid, and a, and a grid is always squares for our purposes. We make a bunch of tiny, simple drawings, and when they're all connected, we see the entire picture or image reproduced. We can do this with three-dimensional information or, as your assignment is going to uh, show you, I'm going to give you these reproductions of fine art works. We're going to do it from two-dimensional work. Much easier. This is the place where you start to learn it. So we're going to do a two-dimensional copy of a master drawing. And I think all of these are Picasso drawings. There might be a Matisse in here. Okay, so I'm going to show you the most straightforward way to use the grid. And then I'm going to show you a couple of other ways to use it. So this is a tool, right? A mechanical aid that will help you visualize in a way that simplifies what you're seeing so that you can draw it easier. Okay, you can do this with a piece of tablet paper, a piece of printing paper, okay, a piece of drawing paper. What we're going to do is, and I need an assistant, come on. I'm going to use these four pieces of paper. I want you to hold that there, okay. And I want you to hold this here. I'm going to Okay, let me move. Okay, now. Hold it. Okay. Hold this. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Alright. <laughs> I'm going to create a window opening of this. These are one inch squares with this paper. Okay? done is I've simplified it even more. Okay, thank you. Robert, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. And I can move this around. Now you're going to be working on this. You can work on it upright like this. It doesn't matter. You can sit. You can stand. All right. But this will help isolate one of those little sections. And you're only going to pay attention to one little section at a time while you're copying. Okay, now I have to do something to prepare my paper here. And you want to take your pencil, okay, and you want to draw out this grid. I'm going to keep it very simple for the first time, okay? I want you to draw out a grid that is one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven inches across. By, I think this is ten. One, two, six, seven, eight, nine. Seven by nine. So this is seven by nine inches. Measure carefully. Use the ruler. Use a pencil. Draw lightly. Make sure it's straight. Okay. So let me show you how you're going to do that. And I'm going to use a sharpie so you can see me. Okay. Use this pen. Okay. So we have a sheet of paper, and I'm going to make a. straight line. Okay, so I put a mark there. I'm not going to come over here. I'm going to mark it in the same place. Line up the two marks. my straight line. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on either side. There's nine. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing so I can level my ruler and get a straight line. If your lines aren't straight and you have rectangles and squares and all kinds of things that are wobbly lines, the drawing will not work for you. Okay. Okay, so you want to be drawing with a pencil. And you want to be drawing lightly. Again, I'm just using this pen here so that everybody can see. You're each going to get one of these transparent grids. Okay. And uh, you have to be careful because I'm handling the surface of the grid and moving my fingers all over it and it's starting to smear. So you can make your own grid. Uh, you can just get a piece of transparency, Kinko's, Office Depot, wherever, and uh, use your Sharpie, use your extra fine Sharpie and draw a one inch grid on it. So if you lose this grid, really mess it up, just get your Sharpie out, make yourself another one, or clean up the first one. I love grids. Grids are so much fun. Those of you who are going to go on and take drawing too, we're going to use the grid again and again and again for each drawing. Every drawing you do is going to be grid based. Okay? So when you see murals around town, most of those are grid based. Even the big ones in Fort Worth that are on the sides of buildings. Uh, when you see a lot of the drawing two uh, examples out in the hallway that are in sections, those are grid based. Okay, and a grid makes it easy. It, it puts things in tiny pieces so that it's manageable. Okay, now I've got an existential question for you, but there's a very practical answer to it. How do you eat an elephant? In pieces. Say again. In pieces. Very close. One piece at a time. One bite at a time. Okay. People get overwhelmed when they see all of this that they have to draw. Okay. Kind of overwhelming. Slow down, calm down, just focus on that one particular line that you're drawing. You're only drawing one line at a time. That's how you one line, one shape. Okay? You're not doing the whole thing. 
Just focus, take all this other stuff out of it. Don't worry about the rest of it. You're just focusing on that one line. That's how everybody does it. One line at a time. So that's what this does. This takes this drawing with all these crazy lines and it's distorted and it, a lot of it is not going to make sense. It doesn't have to be rational. I just want you to copy the lines and shapes. Okay? So for you to do that, don't worry about what it's supposed to be. Don't make corrections. Don't change things. Don't add things. Don't make things up. One bite at a time. Okay? So this bite is going to coordinate with a bite over here. Okay? So now I'm going to do the vertical line. I think I had seven. Okay. Robert? Yes, ma'am. How about you come over here and bolt the right side of the room for me? No, that's good. Got it. This is what a lot of my advanced drawing students are doing now. They're doing uh, extra large drawings, uh, larger than three and a half by four feet. And uh, so they uh, work with photographs a lot, or they'll do a small thumbnail sketch, and they'll want to enlarge it to a, a huge size. So what they'll do is they'll grid off their drawing or their photograph and uh, grid off their drawing paper or drawing board and they'll copy the information to scale. So you're making 100% to 100% drawing. That's it. I forgot one. Forgot one. No, you so didn't. let's say you wanted to do a drawing that was four times the size, enlarged four times, 400% from this original Xerox. What size would your squares be? Four inches. Four inches. Okay. Three and a half times the size. Three and a half inch squares. Okay. Good. So, if you wanted to make it 7 by 9 feet, what size would your squares be? 1 foot, 12 inches. Pretty easy. Scale it up, scale it down. Okay? It's, it's the easiest system. Okay? And who was it from theater that did this? Yeah. Working with it uh, for your stage sets? Scene painting. Scene painting. Okay? Perfect. See, everybody uses it. Okay. Makes sense. Great system. All right, so your handout.
are showing you two ways of working with the grid, but with three-dimensional objects. But now you see what I've set up so far, right? You see, here's the artist. They have their gridded paper, and they're looking through a grid. Here they're looking at a, a, a three-dimensional shape. Over here on the top, you have somebody that has a grid. It's gridded the same size as their piece of paper or their canvas, whatever they have there. And they have someone posing for them. Okay? Mechanical tool, visual aid, okay? This is a, an extra special tool that we use to make visualization and representation very easy. Okay, I'm gonna give you another one. We're gonna call this cropping advice. Uh, advice. This looks an awful lot like what? The viewfinder, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. We've just made a square out of it. Okay, now, let's attach it here. Got a little piece of tape. And okay. So it's all set up to do, okay, one, two, three, four, and one, two, one, two, three, four, and two, okay? So this is the square I'm going to draw right here, okay? You see how that works? It's pretty straightforward. Does everybody understand that? Okay, so I can draw this square by, how did we measure last class? What did, how did we measure lengths of things? All right, you choose one eye shut, arm is extended, not in between, okay? You're always going to sight it. All right, so I can do the same thing here. You can even use a ruler if you want to and measure it. At what point does this line begin? At what point do these lines begin? Okay, that's very tedious if you want to measure all that. So we want you to just eye hand it, eye coordination, eye hand, okay? Just sight it. But be conscious of shapes that you see in here. Don't draw hands. Don't draw eyes. Don't draw ears. Don't draw fruit. Draw a shape, a curving line, an angle. Measure distance. Okay? Draw a line to connecting line. Okay, now this line goes pretty far in here. I'm not going to guess at it. That's all the further I'm going to draw that line. I know where it starts. I know where the next line starts. But I don't know where it ends in here. And here's a connecting line. Look at that shape right there. And there's another shape in here. Okay, then I'm looking at this shape and this line and where it connects along this line. I'm just doing cold hard calculation, okay? I'm not trying to see what it is. Lines that connect off of this edge. There's another line connecting about here. Okay, there's another one. Looking at the height, the distance, height, what's lining up with this, what's lining up here. How close is this line to this line? I'll come up here and start some lines. Here's another line that starts. 
I can check the angle like this. And so I'm going to build my whole square composition like that. Okay. see a shape here, a funky little shape here. Let's try that. Don't connect lines that are not connected. Okay, don't clean up the drawings, don't correct them, don't make them what you think they should look like. Let them be just what they are. Think of it like your personality. You don't want somebody coming in and rearranging you around. You like the way you look, you like the way you are, okay? You don't want anybody poking their nose into your business, so we're going to let the drawing be just exactly what it is. Don't make stuff up. Don't guess at it, okay? Always look at this. Remember, we look at the subject matter 99% of the time. Here's another shape. Right here connects with some lines that come off of that line. I don't know how far over they go yet, so I'm only going to draw, draw part of that line. Okay, now, I'm drawing with pen so you can see me, but guess what? You can draw this all out in pencil first if you want. Okay? You can erase for hours if you want. Okay? Or you can draw just with pen, like I'm doing, okay, right away. But if you want to draw it out in pen first, or excuse me, pencil and eraser, and then come back and do pen over top, you must do it this way. After you do the pencil, you don't just come back and, and look at the drawing and trace over top of it. I want you to cite it again when you do the pen over top of the pencil. Cite it again because something is going to happen. You're going to look at it better the second time around. You're going to correct some mistakes you made in pencil even more when you do the pen. Then you're not going to erase the pencil until you're finished with the pen. Okay? All right. Or you can go for it with the pen right away just like what I'm doing. Okay, the drawing needs to be finished, and you will turn this in. Okay, now I'm looking at this shape. You will turn this in first thing, okay? First thing in class. Look at that. Okay, then I have a line that goes here and connects there. And I got some extra stuff here. And I am making mistakes, by the way. How can I make mistakes? Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. I, I just don't care. Okay, <laughs> because I know that I make mistakes all the time. I had a cat walk across. My cat loves to lay in my paintings while I paint. And this was a watercolor painting, big watercolor painting. It likes to lay under the light. It's hot. So I had just painted a big red, bright red, staining red passage, okay? And it was wet. So I went next door to get a soft drink. And when I came back, the cat had gotten up, walked right through the red wet paint, and the rest of the painting was white. And he made red paw prints across the painting. Uh -huh. There's no way I was going to get it up. That's okay. The red paw prints are still in that painting, okay? But nobody would know unless I pointed it out. Because what you learn to do is really subdue and not conceal or erase. But if I started over every time I made a mistake, I'd never make anything, okay? I learned to work with it. That's why I wouldn't let you start over on your drawing last class because this is what artists do. We don't stop and throw it away. Oh my gosh. 
I might make a mistake when I'm almost done. What am I going to do? Uh, you know, keep going. Uh, learn how to subordinate those issues so effectively. And that's really, I enjoy it. That's part of the fun, you know. It's called problem solving. So what I do is I embrace all of that, the human error or the lack of perfection, okay? It's not like I go around in a negative mood, I make mistakes, I make mistakes all the time. I'm just like, it's just natural, it's what we do. Uh, I just embrace it and go with the flow. No, oh, okay, what am I gonna do now? It's like driving down the road. You didn't know you were gonna get to this dead end, but you gotta go one way or the other. You didn't know it was gonna be there, so, oh, let's see what's this way. That doesn't work, I can turn around and go back the other way. You get the idea? Okay. All right, so nobody's perfect. We're not looking for perfection. I expect you to make lots of mistakes. It's your attitude about those mistakes that we need to learn to live with pretty effectively. Okay, that's, that's a real important skill. Okay, so, all right. You get how you do this now? One square at a time. So I can pick to go to the next square here. Just go to an adjoining square, okay? Now I'm gonna see what I've just drawn. That's okay. What I wanna do is when I'm drawing this square here, I wanna make sure that this line is connecting here so that it makes visual sense. In other words, I don't want one square with the hand that kind of, whoops, it's disembodied and it jumps up here. I want to make sure that I connect the lines. Okay. Now, another way to make it easier to draw is Robert, assistant, do me a favor, put a piece of tape right there, okay? Where again? Right there. Two, tape both those together. Yep, you got it. All right, so I didn't want my grid to move away from my reproduction here, so. Robert? Yes, ma'am. Two pieces of tape. One more. A little bit bigger. That's good. Come on, Mike. Here we go. Why have I turned it upside down? As contradictory as it sounds, it's important that we don't recognize what we're drawing. The more we can disconnect from what it actually is, the easier it will be to draw. Anybody know why? Because that way you're only looking at the, at the lines, not what the lines make. Exactly, yeah. We're not looking, remember I said we're not gonna draw eyes, we're not gonna draw ears, we're not gonna draw, okay? And this is how representational artists work. If you want to learn to make very realistic drawings, paintings, whatever, you learn to abstract what you see. And what I mean by abstraction is it's just a shape. It's just a shape. This. This is just a shape, okay? And how else did I talk about the two juxtaposed shapes? What is the idea of what you're putting together here? Puzzle pieces, remember that? Okay, so you are placing shapes and lines you know, eventually it's going to make a shape, okay? It 
because it's going to enclose. The lines are going to connect and they will enclose, so it's a shape, okay? But, um, I don't know what they are, but you will see with accuracy if you are just looking at the small stuff, not trying to figure out, but what is that? What is that that I'm drawing? Don't try and figure it out. The more you make it unrecognizable, less familiar it is, the easier. And these are all ways of making the familiar unfamiliar. Makes it easier for your right brain to take control. Okay? The more you shift to the right, the more accurate your perception. The more you're stuck over here with, oh my gosh, it's shoelaces. I don't, I don't know. And you get anxiety and you get congestion and you get confused. Okay. You're not going to be able to draw all of this stuff in the square at the same speed you draw that square. Do you see the difference? There's not a lot in there, okay? So when you're drawing the heel of the shoe, you'll be able to draw it a little bit faster, a little bit easier than if you were drawing the shoelaces. Look at, think of it as a traffic jam. You're not going to get out of there very quickly, right? The line of traffic goes from here to Dallas. It's going to take you a while to kind of untangle it. There's a lot of stuff to see. So there's a lot more to draw there. It's going to take you more time. Slow down. Look at it. Again, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Okay. Some places, you know, you can go 85 miles an hour. Some places, you have to slow down maybe to 35, the school zone. <laughs> Lots of kids run around, okay? All right, does that all click? Yeah? Yes, maybe? Okay, all right. Um, so, all right, that's your other class assignment, okay? Now, if you want to be big and brave and say, oh, I got this at this scale, I'm going to do it twice the same size. All I care about is you take a sheet of your 18 by 24 white drawing paper, okay, and uh, put a drawing on it. If you got room for two times the size, go for it. If you got room for three times the size, go for it, okay? If you do it three times the size, your squares are going to be, okay? Maybe you can go an inch and a half. Maybe you can go to two and a half inches. Okay? Doesn't matter as long as you have nine by, excuse me, seven by nine. Doesn't matter what size your squares are. Okay? So if you want to do it bigger, go for it. That'll just prove to me that you understand the grid system pretty well. Okay? So when you're done, leave the grid. It's in pencil, but leave the grid. But I want to see a final ink drawing with your Sharpie Extra Fine, okay? And this, you won't be able to accomplish this quickly. Don't try and rush it. Go for accuracy, okay? All right, questions? That's the grid, okay. So before we get started on our next drawing, I'm gonna go ahead you guys find your places. If you want to sign your drawings, those of you who are done and put your drawings up, that's good. Did anybody start a drawing with these? 